Okay, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. And I want you to think about this. Listen to this. Picture this. I want to picture a very dark moment. Very dark. Picture your relative. I'm going to bring it home. And then we're going to take it to a few other places. Because I want you to get the power of God. You got darkness going on right now. You're in a hospital room or you're in a bedroom and your loved one is laying there at the door of death. And this one is one you really care for. This one is really in your heart and it really breaks your heart. You're hurting because they're dying. Now, you don't know they have a life insurance policy. And you're begging God, Lord, let him live, 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 him or her. But God is saying, the two of us have put our heads together. We got a plan. And it's a plan of blessing for you. But all you feel right now is the grief, the pain, the darkness, the longing for this person you'll never see again. Mm for right now in the land of the living and you are devastated and that feeling of absence is growing stronger and stronger because you know they will no longer be with you they will no longer be a part of your life very dark very dark oh I've been there a couple of times picture another scenario you're standing there looking at a hopeless sight, the one and only one that you had faith in has been totally victimized by his own creation. And he's not fighting. He's not using his supernatural powers to come down. He's up there suffering, waiting for death to release him, waiting for God to give him permission to give up the ghost. But while he's hanging there, he must suffer the pain, the humiliation, while they make fun of him down below and cast lots for his garments and all that. But he is suffering. And he even has a moment where he says, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Now, who am I talking about? I'm talking about Jesus. He suffered. What a dark moment in his life. What a dark moment to feel the separation of him and God. And people who believed in him, who dropped everything and followed him. And it's all over. For all they know for all intents and purposes, it's all over. The sky is dark. The air is dreary. That foreboding feeling of death is in the atmosphere. Nothing, no hope, nothing to look forward to. What was it all about, Alfie? It's all over. And I got to live with this pain. Why? But see, God's plans, his ways are above our ways, his thoughts above our thoughts. Now, when the scenario was there where you mourning the family member, you had no idea that the house you were about to lose and the finances and the debt and all the frustration that you've been through, that person hooked up with God and asked God to use his life or her life insurance policy to rescue you and bless you tremendously. And you have no idea there's a big blessing awaiting you once that last breath is drawn. Yes, to your eyes, to your natural understanding, it looks like a horrendous thing. But in God's eyes and their eyes, they know it's a blessing waiting for you right around the corner. It's a setup for you, but you don't see it. And sometimes, even if the person's not involved, God always has a blessing. Always. Now listen, here's another one. Imagine the disciples watching as he takes his last breath. And now they ask for his body so they could uh, prepare it for burial. 
the pain of holding that dead body in their arms. I remember how I felt when I held my baby, my husband, in my arms. And his head was, was like a ball on a string. There was no, it, I mean, I had to be careful not to flop it. I mean, it was like, oh my God, there's no life in this body. And, but he was my baby and I still loved what was left of him. Here they are carrying the bloody, battered, beaten, tortured body of Jesus. But they had no idea that during those three days of heavy, dark morning, hopeless morning, that the sun would rise and so would he. That he would rise from the dead at the dawning of the sun and in his rising, all authority, all power, he would bestow on us. No idea the glory that would come after that horrible death. Now, I hope I painted a dreary enough picture for you. You have no idea. I don't care what the government has planned. I don't care what the Illuminati is doing. I don't care what the banking system is scheming at. I don't care what's going on. I don't care if they plan to turn this country over to another country. It doesn't matter what the schemes are. See, the wicked will be taken in their own devices. But God is here on behalf of the righteous. Those that are determined to trust in him. Those that worship him in spirit and in truth. Those that are about our father's business. Those that love him and love his ways. Listen, no matter how dark it's feeling right now, no matter how scary it is, I don't get food stamps because God already challenged me. And there's no money for food stamps, but God still blesses me with food. God blessed me years ago through a foreclosure to own this beautiful home. I had to go through hell to get to heaven. But you're going through, you may be going through hell, but remember God is leading you to heaven. Figuratively speaking right now, you may feel like, oh no, I got to go through hell again. Whatever you do, you keep going through. Keep going, keep going with your heart locked into God because he will pull you through and you won't feel any smell of smoke. I don't care how much you feel like you had to go through the fire, you will not be burned. I don't care how much you feel like you got to go through the flood, you will not be drowned. It will not kill you. But through it all, you learn to trust in Jesus and you watch what's waiting for you on the other side of this darkness. You may not see the light at the end of the tunnel, but you got the light in you and he will enlighten your darkness. And once God's light sheds on you, all darkness must flee, all of it. So don't curse the Lord. Don't curse the darkness. Bless the Lord and trust as he leads you through that darkness into his marvelous light. And when you, that light is shining bright, you'll get to see what blessing is really there for you. Keep believing. Keep trusting. Keep following. Whatever you do, keep following. It's in your praise, it's in your faith, it's in your trusting and obeying that the blessing becomes full. What if I had cursed God when I went through foreclosure? I wouldn't be in this house. I'd be scooped up in somebody's old garage because that's all I had the money to rent. I could barely have money to rent a room. But God positioned me to own a home with a $321 mortgage. That's crazy. And he timed it at the bottom of the market. 
That's ridiculous. That's God. Don't complain. Don't gripe. Don't murmur. Don't suck your teeth. And don't you dare pout. You pray. You praise him. You read your word and encourage yourself in the Lord. And you keep pressing in. You put one foot in front of the other when all you want to do is collapse and cry. You let the tears run down your face. That's fine. Cry it out. But you keep moving. You keep following. You keep praying. You keep listening. And you keep believing. God bless you. You will know. You'll see it as you follow on to know. You just keep on going. Mm. Mm -hmm. God will perfect that which concerns you.